Hello everyone, this is Venom Geek Media here, and today we begin to open Pandora's box. By which I mean we begin talking about subjects which concerning I will never shut up about again. So you can guarantee more videos like this will be on the way. So today I was just going to talk about Doctor Who, specifically my favourite of the newer Doctors, by which I mean the modern Doctors, so from 2005 onwards. I could talk about the original Doctors, but I don't, I've not seen all of them, um, and obviously some episodes are missing, so it's very hard to actually give a very good understanding. Also, Doctor Who was very different back in the 1960s. It was um, a much longer series for starters. The series would run for much longer because each episode was actually divided into four parts, um, at least. Um, so yeah, it's very hard to compare the two. Really, it just wouldn't be fair. And you know, some doctors are a bit awkward. But so, for the sake of this video, we will be talking about the five modern doctors. Christopher Eccleston's Ninth Doctor, David Tennant's Tenth Doctor, Matt Smith's Eleventh Doctor, and Peter, Capal Peter Capaldi's Twelfth Doctor, as well as John Hurt's War Doctor. Um, and just kind of which one I like the most, which one I like the least. Um, yeah, so let's begin. Who do I like the least? Matt Smith! Really, that should be surprising. Uh, that shouldn't be surprising to anyone. I really get the impression that <laughs> Doctor Who's popularity dwindled. Then it was. It felt like I don't. I just didn't. I just was never keen on him. I wasn't sad when he went. I wasn't, you know, particularly upset. When he left, he just, you know, I was like, okay, finally, some fresh. That's not to say that I didn't like him. He was fun and good at times. He was very good at playing uh, a doctor. But often enough, I felt that he was trying to be David Tennant. And, you know, that partly comes with its own problem. He was the successor to David Tennant. That's very, very, very difficult to pull off, the, you know. Um... But there are episodes where Matt Smith, I think, shines and does very well. Um, I would also say, but then you know, other elements of Matt Smith. Um, his redesign was good. It, you know, he brought they brought in an even bigger TARDIS with more detail, which I thought was good. But stylistically, it's a bit mm, all over the place. Um, his new sonic screwdriver, I must admit, I do like. It fits his new aesthetic quite well. And then, the main thing we you talk about with Matt Smith is his... Well, not the main thing, but, he, you know, he actually goes through two looks. He has the first, the early look, which is a tweed jacket and a bow tie, and then the other one's a darker jacket and a waistcoat and a bow tie. <laughs> I mean... You know, what can you say about either? They're good looks, but they're very traditional almost. They're very much something you would expect from a very traditional style doctor. Um and in that way they're a bit, you know, unremarkable. Um it felt like ah, oh, you know, they it felt like for him they just had a look back. Oh, what did the old doctors wear? Oh, they wore that, they wore that, let's throw a bit of that in. So in that way, it's you know it's we've it's good and it's good. It looks like the Doctor, but well, we've seen it before. We've seen it before plenty of times in the classic series. Um, you know, he Matt Smith plays a much more a very very energetic, very bouncy, and very silly Doctor. And there are times when this works, and this works very well for him. Uh, I particularly like the episodes featuring. James Corden. Uh, they're all very good, very funny. Uh, the two actors seem to work quite well together. Um, and there are some other episodes that I thought worked very well with him. Specifically, uh, another example, Night Terrors. He, you know, it's where his bounciness actually pays off. His bounciness tends to pay off quite well in the 
you know, arguably scarier episodes. Um, you know, he, you know, because then he's able to, you know, calm everything down and be a bit si and still he's a bit silly. Um, you know, so yeah, other things that I think held him back were his companions. They're just plain. Amy on her own is plain. Amy and Rory together are a nice little pairing. But Clara, eh, hey, goodness. I couldn't wait until she left. But that's a subject for another time. But personally, Matt Smith, he's just very unremarkable. He's good and he delivers some good episodes. But that's not necessarily where he can shine. But, you know, he, he can't carry an episode. If an episode's poorly written, he can't do anything about it. It's going to be a bad, it's going to be a weaker episode. He can't do anything to boost that episode at all. Um, so then, next on the lift, at num lift, list, at number four is John Hurt. Almost by a kind of a, well, default. It's not that I dislike John Hurt, so, you know, I um, but it's very difficult to really talk about him because he's in one episode as the War Doctor. Um, that being said, how does he work out? He, well, actually, he works out pretty well. He plays the part of a War Doctor very well. Of a younger Doctor, he's like, oh goodness, is that really how I get old? You get younger and younger, all that sort of thing. You know, John Hurt plays him very good with. You know, sort of a bit of humour, uh, but also you know a bit of you know despair and you know fear. He plays him very well as someone sort of this sort of war ragged, broken man, uh, and you can see you know he and he poses quite a mysterious figure. Um, in terms of his look, we don't we do see his TARDIS and it's kind of a bit of pre. Uh, modern, which I like, it was good, but overall, uninspired, it was just like, oh, well, we just do what led up to a Christopher Eccleston, so it was a bit of a easy choice for TARDIS. Uh, that being said, his look is very strong. It's not quite like anything we've had before. Uh, it doesn't look like any of the original Doctors, certainly, he doesn't look like any of the original Doctors. Um, you know, in his very warlike look, and he doesn't look as you know dynamic or modern as you know and energetic and as clean cut as the more recent doctors. He looks like a war doctor. He looks like a man who has been through war and you know who has been fighting for a long time. And it looks like it's taken its toll on him, which is kind of the point. I mean, the doctor never you know would like to fight. He never would fight. So, seeing that, you know, you can see the very visual toll, and it's actually a very good way of, you know, sort of precursoring the later Doctors that we see, and the scars they carry. He's the, he's the open wound, uh, or he's the visible scar that hasn't yet been bandaged. Uh, and he was, you know, very interesting to see. Uh, oh, why do I put him above Matt Smith? Well, Matt Smith just went around too long. Uh, his story arc was re really quite excessive and confusing, and I did not like it at all. Whereas John Hurt's, well, his story arc was within one episode, and it was a very strong story arc. You really felt for him. Um, you know, it's the Doctor in despair and uncertain of himself. Um, so, you know, he's quite he's quite good and I would like to see more of him. I would have liked to see more of John Hurt and that's ultimately why I put him above Matt Smith. Um it's really as simple as that. So, who do we move on to now at number 3? Peter Capaldi. Now, this is a bit of an unfair judgment as He's not been around too long. Well, he's done two series now, so he's been around a fair amount. But you know, he's not completed his tour as the Doctor or his time as the Doctor. There's still more to see from him. We still have a lot to see from him. But 
from what we got, what have we got? So, well, his look. His his look. Well, actually, no, let's start from the basics. He's a, you know, he's a very good follow-up to Matt Smith. He was a very bouncy and energetic and, you know, loving and all that sort of nice fluffiness doctor. And this guy is just, he is, that is all stripped away. He's unsympathetic and uh, on occasions he doesn't really understand. He's very confused in a lot of ways, you know. I, and I really like, there's a lot of ambiguity and he's a very much more of a grey area doctor. Um, I haven't rewatched his most recent series, but I really love that series. I thought that was one of the best bloody series of Doctor Who I have seen. The one from last year. Um, it was one of the best series of Doctor Who I have ever s- I have seen in a long time. Um, and that's partly um, Peter Capaldi. He plays the part so well. He's so different from what we've had from all the fluffy, bouncy doctors and he's very much, you know, more, uh, you know, aggressive and you can see um, just kind of a a very different man, a very broken man. It's more revealed in him. In terms of his look, I, I, I quite liked his early look. Uh, but the look in the most recent series with the hoodie, it, yeah, it feels much more ragged and a lot more like him. Um, and his companion, oh, well, we basically just have Clara and, oh, I couldn't wait until she left. So that's neither. But, critically, what Peter Capaldi can do is, can he turn around a bad episode? Not if the scriptwriters have gone batshit crazy. No, he can't. So for the instant, for instance, the one of the in the more of the more recent series, uh, the most recent series, there was an episode with was it the Sandman, with the people who were like out of the sleep in your eyes, you know, who were made out of sleep. It was bizarre. It was a bizarre episode, and really, he couldn't. It was very difficult. The way the writers engineered the episode, it was very difficult for him to uh, carry it. You know, he couldn't really intervene all that much. Uh, but he's good whenever he's in it. Every he's a screen stealer, uh, and he plays this very you know unpredictable, very ambiguous doctor. One of my favorite, well, two of my favorite episodes with them would be his introduction. Where he's kind of finding his identity. Yeah, there's silly bits with the robots and the, you know, um, dinosaur and all that, and the Silurian woman and the Sonta- and a Sontaran butler and a girlfriend who's also a maid. Yeah, weird stuff. It feels very much like the old series of Doctor Who there, and it's very campy. Um, but he plays a great bit, and I love the question he poses: "Am I a good man?" And that is a question that is always toyed with, and I really enjoy that. Particularly, I like the ambiguity where, you know, did he kill the robot? Did he, you know, because he says, you know, this can only end in one of two ways. Either the robot throws himself out, or the doctor throws him out. And that's quite scary, you know. There's that uncertainty. Did he kill him? Did the doctor murder him? Uh, and that's a great question, and P- Peter Capaldi carries that very well. And, the, you know, I like how they dove in that episode, how they l- looked into why he has that face, because obviously it rem- resembles the face of the guy who played, well, because it is the face of the guy who played Kai Kelius. Peter Capaldi played Kai Kelius back in season three, no, series four. Um, and it was quite good to sort of see them acknowledge that and investigate that. Another episode, I well, two other episodes. Uh, Listen, that was superb. Great script writing and deployment of, you know, scare tactics and all that. But also the way he carries the episode and the way he presents it is incredible. Um, and then in one of the more recent series, the most recent series, when he's in the castle with the monster and it's just him. That is superb, because that is just Peter Capaldi on his own. No one else acting. And he doesn't get stale, he doesn't get dull, he doesn't, 
you know, he holds that episode and holds it blinking well. And, you know, to do a, f you know, 40, 50 minute episode on your own. No dialogue whatsoever. That's bloody impressive. So, yeah, I really like Peter Capaldi and I look forward to seeing what else he can give us. Um, and maybe, maybe he might move up on this list when he's done. But as he stands now... He's a solid three. He's at number three, right? Number two. Yeah. You know, by which point you've, you obviously we've narrowed it down to two candidates, and I think we all know the answers. Christopher Eccleston at number two. He, this was he was just a great guy to pick for bringing back Doctor Who. Why? Because he was so different and modern and all these things. You know, the Doctor has previously been played by you know very much Queen's English speaking um, sort of s southern old men um, who dress very quirkily. Here we have a very sort of trendy looking northerner and it's great and I love all the acknowledgement that they give to him being a northerner and his, you know, he plays clearly a very, and he plays a very abrasive doctor and also, you know, one that's very charming um, and you can see in you know in his episodes um he carries the scars of the time war he, uh, it's not much of a leap to see John Hurt go to Christopher Eccleston. It works very well, of course, I have to praise the visual design of the series with the new look tardis it's so different from the old clean look and you know again, similarly with how the doctor dresses it's a lot more well plain but still distinguished and different and carrying a lot of um, character with him. And he just plays it so well and there are some really great episodes with him. I particularly like um, Boomtown. He has a good, he has a good scene in that. Um, Bad Wolf and Parting of Ways. It's just a really great to see this very abrasive doctor who's come out of this really traumatic experience you know build a relationship you know Rose is basically we can guess the first person he really encounters and the first person he you know actually builds a relationship with um and you know and you buy them and they fall in love almost almost I'd say um but it works very well and he works very well and he was just a great way of bringing like you know saying boom this is new doctor who this is what it's going to be like his series took itself seriously and he took the character seriously um and he played him in a way that has never been done before i think would be fair to say um uh, very different much more you know working class much more rugged much less polite um so I thought, he, you know, that's why he's at number two. He was just so distinguished, and he was such a good way of bringing back Doctor Who with a bang. You know, if they had brought back Doctor Who with Matt Smith, I think everyone would have just remained pretty indifferent. Probably hardcore fans would have watched it, but they, but Christopher Eccleston was a great choice, um, and his series was great. Um, so that moves to number one. When I started this list, I think we could all tell who was going to be at number one. I mean, it's blatantly obvious. It's the most traditional choice anyone can pick, um, and it's just the most boring and you know often choice. But that's because it's the right choice. Well, subjectively, the right choice because he is so good. David Tennant is just superb as the Doctor. He did four series. Well, actually, you could probably argue five series, because he did... Well, no, he didn't do four series. That's me. He did three series, but potentially four series, because he did series two, series three, and series four. And he had the specials, so potentially four series. Um, and you know what? 
He never got stale. He never got old. Matt Smith served for that long. Served, you know, a similar length. But I was bored of Matt Smith. I was happy for a change. I didn't want to see David Tennant go. And I don't think anyone did. And, you know, it says it all. Um, His series 2 is, you know, it was just more of the same just kind of building on the success of series one and he's you you buy his relationships and you buy his character he's very different from christopher eccleston he's a lot more bouncy and energetic and quirky and funny and witty and all these great things and all that and uh, you know his look is very again very distinguished but very modern um you know with the mod and then the the sort of the mod suit and then the trench coat it looks very good and very distinctive whilst you know not really whilst being quite original yeah um his series obviously also brought back a lot of uh monsters and villains but also uh created a lot of very big new ones and he had some superb episodes um you know, all throughout his series, I could list just, I'll just list a few right here. You know, Tooth and Claw, School Reunion, Reunion, School Reunion, Army of Ghosts, and Doomsday. Fuck, Doomsday. Yeah, that was incredible. Army of Ghosts, Doomsday, Blink. Sound of Drums, Last of the Time Lords. <laughs> Still going. Um, the End of Time, The Waters of Mars. These are such good episodes. Um, Midnight. Oh, okay. Let's just. I'm just going to home in right here. Midnight. What an episode. Because, okay, it's not like Peter Capaldi's in the castle, but it's a very similar thing in that it's the Doctor holding the screen. There's no real, you know, other major characters in there. It's just him. And he is just, you know, and it is David Tennant performing, you know, on his, you know not on his own. He's doing dialogue, but he's not got really a supporting character alongside. Uh, he's in a group of strangers. And David Tennant is just, Oh, he's so good in it. He's so good in it. Um, you can just see his acting ability. And actually, you you buy his emotions. He brings tears to my eyes. The love story between him and Rose, I you know I loved, and I thought that was brilliant. And I bought it. It you know it never had to be explicitly set up. You know, like later on with other supposed love stories. You know. It was just there, and you could see it or you could not see it. And in Doomsday, at that the ending of Doomsday is just, you know, the act by both actors, particularly David Tennant, he's so powerful, and it's just that it brings a tear to my eye. Really, it brought tears to my eyes when I watched it. it still does. Um, Last of the Time Lords, him and John Sim, and you know when the master supposedly dies, and he's just, you know. You buy that, and that's really good. Um, his and also, I really loved his relationship with uh, Don Noble. That sort of the uh, the two buddies, the two friends, and it was oh, and it was always that it was just two mates, and they were just so funny. Catherine Tate and David Tennant have such good chemistry. They work really well together. They're re- both really talented actors, and you can see that in. Um, I think they did an adaptation of Much Do About Nothing, and they were superb, both of them. And, um, yeah, that all being said about David Tennant, he also brought something else to the Doctor. He brought a more subtle darkness to the Doctor. He is the most scary because, you know, yes, he has his moments where, um, you know, he's all happy and bouncy. Ah, yeah, is most of the time, and he's great. Uh, and, you know, and then you've got the times where he's being all moral and all that. And that's great, and I love it. But also you have the times when he is just fucking scary. Because he goes from that to that. To what we see in episodes like uh, Waters of Mars, or 
The Runaway Bride, and that is fucking scary, especially in The Runaway Bride. That ending, that scene with him killing the um, Rachnos, drowning them, you really buy. There's something nasty under there. There's a war doctor still lingering under there that he's trying, you know, that he's created this, you know, happy, bouncy, nice facade. But actually, there's, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff in him. And ultimately, you know, he he remained constantly able to evoke emotions and remained compelling for all the time that he was the Doctor. You know, even at the end of the end of time, where he uh, takes the radiation poisoning, his final moments are just so powerful, especially when he's you know going around seeing his companions, particularly Rose. That's great. Um, and then his just his last line, I don't want to go. Yeah, it's the f- I'm yeah, I'm yeah, I'm just I'm just getting tear tearing up just thinking about it. That's how blinking powerful it was. It, you know, he's so good as an actor, very very talented, and there's really no question. That's why he's the best. You know, because he's such a good actor. He's remained fresh. He had layers. He had depth. And actually, in his fairness, he had solid writing, although I didn't like Russell T. Davis's Jesus imagery. Seriously, man. You couldn't be any less subtle. Um, But he also had solid companions as well to act alongside. Billy Piper and him, they they just worked very well. Fuma Agerman, you know, she was very good. And... uh, her uh, and then him and Catherine Tate are a riot. They are brilliant. So, yeah, that's ultimately why I think he's the best and why he's my favourite. Um, but those are just my thoughts. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts? Let me know in the comments below, and I shall see you guys in the next tef- in the next video.